chapter 13. Here's what happened, writing a narrative. Now, what I'm going to do with chapter 13 is I'm going to read and respond, and I'm going to explain and hopefully answer questions and clarify your doubts regarding what it is exactly that you're going to do on October 3rd. You're going to be writing an informal essay. You're going to be writing an informal essay. So let's go over chapter 13. I'm not going to read every page. Uh, and I'm just going to go to certain parts in particular in the chapter that, that are going to help you kind of understand and make a connection with the objectives that I've discussed with you on a week-by-week -week basis. So chapter 13 starts with a very important phrase. So tell me what happened. You know, when you have a conversation with, with a relative, with a friend, and you're doing that at home, you're doing that uh, during lunch, you know, uh, in an evening chat, uh, on the telephone, on Facebook, sometimes a written conversation, sometimes with FaceTime. You know, a person is telling you a situation that they went through during the day. And then you ask or say, so, tell me what happened. Anytime we ask someone about an incident, and I'm reading from the book, chapter 13, at work, or an event at school, we're asking for a narrative. Every time you do that, your response is going to be a story. Now, when you hear the term story, that can be a little bit impressive, right? I don't know how to write a story. But we tell stories all the time. All the time. You know, when you, for example, what do you do in your free time? That's a story. You know, why did you move? That's a story. Tell me about when you relocated to Florida. That's a story. Tell us about what happened. So as your reader, I'm going to be one reading your, your essay. As your reader, you're going to tell me a story. Narratives are stories. They are fundamental parts of our everyday lives. When we tell someone about a movie we've seen or a basketball game we played in, we often use narrative. When we want someone to understand something that we did, we might tell us tell a story that explains our actions. When we post on Instagram, when we often write about something we've just done or seen. So, when you think of a story, you know, it's, a, it's telling the story that you shared so much verbally, but now you're doing it in written form. So that's the difference. The difference between saying it verbally and writing it is basically a process. When you tell a story, you just go ahead and say it. You start talking to another person and you start just, you open your mouth and, you know. But when you write it, there has to be a process. That's why I'm taking you through this process on a week by week basis. That's why you read Anne Lamont. That's why you read George Orwell. That's why you've read chapter 13. I'm taking you through the process of reading and understanding that when you express yourself in writing, there has to be a process. So if you're writing a story about your worst job interview, the advantage that we have today is that, yeah, you put that on YouTube, worst job interview, and you're going to see horrible job interviews. You're probably going to laugh. But I'll tell you something, you're probably going to remember an experience that you had, which was probably your worst nightmare in terms of a job interview. So you have to find a way to start a process. Go to a TED Talk. How many of you watch TED Talks? By the way, I've done a TED Talk. I'm just going to throw this in. It's called Bridging the Cultural Gap in Education. Bridging the Cultural Gap in Education. You should watch that TED Talk. It's your professor. But when you go to TED Talk, you go to YouTube and you search, you can search your topic. There are TED Talks on relocation, moving from one country to another. There, there's TED Talks on interviews. There are TED, TED Talks on relationships. There are different TED Talks. So take your time and, and find a way to make a connection with your 
informal essay. Story, informal essay equals story. That's what I'm talking about. Tell me a story. So I'm still on one page 186, chapter 13. If you have another edition, it's basically the same chapter. It says, describe a meaningful event or experience and how it has changed or affected the person you are today. So listen to me. That's a story. If you're able to respond to a problem like that, that's a story. A meaningful event. A personal, moral, or ethical dilemma. And how it impacted your life. That's a story. Maybe you've had experiences with, you know, talking about what's happening right now, contemporary issues, you know, with Black Lives Matter. Maybe you've had an experience already. Maybe you've been out there in the protests. Maybe you have it. I don't know what your experiences are. So tell me about your experiences. Tell me about a story within the contemporary issues that we face today. Maybe you had an issue with a policeman. It could be a negative one. It could be a, how about a positive story with a cop? I can tell you a positive story. I mean, I had an accident in New York about 30 years ago. I was fixing one of my cars. I was fixing a car, an old Lincoln that I had. Uh, and uh, 1978, and this is 1990. Uh, and I'm trying to move, you know, the, the radiator, making believe I'm a mechanic. I'm a son of a mechanic, but I don't know anything about cars. But I was trying to do something with the car, and all of a sudden my hand slipped, and my hand, both of my hands went right into the fan of the car. Now, I want you to see my hands. So this was split open. This just went like that, you know. It split open. And when I looked at that, I mean, my hands were filled with blood. And I didn't even know what was going on. When I saw my hands filled with blood, I just, guess what? I, I, I fainted. I mean, I, I, went, I went to the ground. And my head hit the ground, and, 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 and I was lying on the ground. All of a sudden, the cops drove by. This is New York City. And they saw me on the ground, my hands bleeding, and I was semi-conscious. And they came up to me. They picked me up. And they were talking to each other. I couldn't even understand what they were saying. One of them got an old rag, and they started, you know, uh, another one of uh, another, the cops told the other Listen, make sure that rag is a clean rag. So they got a rag. I didn't care what they were doing. All I knew, all I knew was that they were helping me. And they, you know, they started wrapping my hands around these rags. And, and, and they, they, the police station just happened to be nearby. And I walked with them. I kind of woke up. One cop on one side and another. And they took me to the police station. They sat me down. And then they asked me, do you have a telephone, someone we can call? And they called my wife. I remember that story well. And then, you know, the ambulance came and they took me to the hospital. That's a story. I just told you a story right there. A story that I have with, with, with good cops from New York City. So tell me your story. And I'm, I'm on chapter 187. Narrative is a powerful way to get an audience's attention. Get my attention with a story like that. Well, not like that. Your story. Telling a good story can even establish your authority as a writer. Now, this is this is freshman composition. And guess what? You're writing here. You're writing stories. So you're beginning with an informal story. Then we're going to transition into a formal essay. But that's not just yet. We still, got, we still have three weeks with this. So I need you to stay with me. Stay connected with, don't go ahead, you know? I mean, some students are like, I, I want to go ahead. Stay with me. Go, this is one week at a time now. Uh, I want to go a little bit further in the chapter. Like I said, I'm reading and responding, right? Everyone's an author. Chapter 13. And... Uh, On chapter 192, 
you have the characteristic features of a story. So there's no one way to tell a story. I'm reading from the chapter. Most written narratives, however, have a number of common features revolving around the following characteristics and questions. A clearly identified event. So you need a title for your story. So your story is going to be based on an event, something that happened to you. You need people. You need settings. You need conflict. A clearly described setting. When and where did it happen? Vivid descriptive details. What makes the story come alive? So you need to use details. You need to use adjectives. A consistent point of view. Who's telling the story? You know, if it's an informal story, your point of view, it's about I. If you want to write about your mom or your dad, you can do that. He, she. But I would rather you stay and stick to I. I want to see I all over your story. I, 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 I. It's an informal story. Hello. This is about you. This is about your story. And last but not least, a clearly a clear point. Why does the story matter? It matters to me. I'm your reader. I'm you know, I'm dying to read your stories. And then the rest of the chapter takes those characteristics and, it, you know, they, they break them apart into different paragraphs where you can get more information about each of the features that I just mentioned. You know, and at the end of the chapter, you have examples of stories. You have, uh, you have a story about at the VA, right? healing the doctor-patient relationship, that's a story. Don't be impressed with these stories. You know, don't be impressed with them. This story is told in the third person. You can use the third person if you like, if you'd like, if you want to. I think it's, it's, it's I don't want to say easier, but I think it's better for you to start writing first person. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Your first story should always be written in the first person. If you've already written stories before, Use third person, he, she, write about your husband, your boyfriend, your mother, your father, a friend. Someone that you admire, write about your hero. Write about an, an important, significant experience with the pandemic. Maybe you had COVID, write about that story. Maybe you had COVID and you, know, you overcame COVID and you feel like you've conquered the world. And of course you are. Because I've had relatives passing away. I've had several relatives and friends passing away. So we all know people that have had COVID. Maybe you've had COVID and you overcame COVID. So write that story. I mean, that would be an interesting story, fascinating story. And then at the end of the chapter, and I'm going to... Uh, go over writing a narrative, a roadmap. Number one, when you're selecting a topic, make sure it matters to you. If, you. if you're looking at the pages, if you have the chapter, you'd like to open your book, I'm on page 214, 214. So you know, choose a topic that matters to you, to you. If it matters to you, it matters to me. I mean, the reason why I'm doing these videos is that so you get to hear me and listen to me. And get to know me a little bit better. If you listen to my TED talk, you know, you'll be able to understand me a little bit more. You don't need to understand me, but I mean, I mean, I'm your audience. Did you know that the first thing that you need to understand is when you have an audience, you have to get to know your audience. Well, here I am. I'm your audience. Look at this t-shirt that I have, coming to America. Look at the flag that I have, Puerto Rico. Look at the hat that I have. Connect all that to your story. This is your audience. It doesn't mean I like this or I like that. You have to study your audience. I have various videos on YouTube, you know, on different topics. So you don't have to go there and watch them all, but if you want to know if I'd be interested in your story or not, maybe you'd like to do that. But guess what? I'm interested in your story, period. 
and I am going to be interested. It's going to be exciting, and I'm going to be enthusiastic, and I am already. I'm fired up. I can't wait for October 3rd. Number two, if you're writing a personal narrative, choosing a topic can be difficult because you're deciding to share something personal. This is always a hassle. This is a hassle. Thinking about a story that's personal, mm, I mean, we don't like to share personal things. Well, you know, when you write a story that's personal, just be selective with what, with what you want to say. I mean, I told you about the cop story. I didn't tell you the whole story. I decided what I wanted to share with you. You're going to do the same thing with your story. You know? If, if something personal, you don't have to give all the details. I don't want to hear that. Just tell me your story. As if you were sharing your story with someone at home. In a restaurant, in a park. If you're writing a narrative, if your narrative is not a personal one, you will want to start by compelling there to be compelling. So what that means is, if it's not personal, use a compelling. You know, a story is like a movie. So if you're not writing about yourself and you're writing about someone else, third person. He, she, uh, they. Then you're gonna have to use com use compelling events. You know, start begin begin a story the way you would you would begin a movie. Uh, I don't know why I thought of the movie. Maybe because of the pandemic, right? I thought of I Am Legend, one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, and in the movie, that first scene, you know, that helicopter accident. Mm. Wow. <laughs> the helicopter accident. Amazing, right? So think of a first scene in your story, a first paragraph that has compelling emotional impact on the reader. So when you write a story, I'm not saying think about your audience because I already told you that one. Think about your purpose. Think about the goals here. Think about your stance, your position within the story. No need for any research here, unless you would like to watch a video, uh, a TED Talk, and just look for information related, connected to your story. You know? Sometimes we think, I'm the only one that I've been through. No, you're not. You know, if anyone knew, right? Or, I mean, I've had students, I've been teaching for 35 years. Public schools, private schools, colleges, universities, you, you name it. I've been there, done that. And I, I've had students come to me and say, you don't know what I've been through. And I'm like, I don't know, but guess what? Others have been through the same situation as you. Now, you, 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 you can debate me on that, right? You'll say, come on, professor, I'm the only one in the world. No, you're not. You're not. Did you know that your story is universal? Listen to me now. Your story is universal. You're a movie maker. You're a history maker. I'm trying to empower and encourage you right now to write your story, to get it done. It says organize and start writing. This is basically to the end of the chapter, right? Organize and start writing. How do you do that? You have to start brainstorming. You have to put in your ideas down. And I've already spoke to you about mapping. You can map. You know, you can start. Let me show you. If you don't know where to start, you can start here, right? You can. Let's go back to that. Uh, uh, the story about cops. I'll call it good cop story. That's my title. This is how you brainstorm, right? So then I'm going to write who. Then I'm going to write when, where, why, what, and how. And then I'm going to start branching out, right? And I'm going to do the same thing. So this is just an example of how you can brainstorm. You can also write a list.
good cop. And I can write a list. New York City. Number two, car accident. Number three. So you go on and, and you can, you know, you start making a list of things related to the story. And then you start taking the things in the list and you start adding more information. This is called listing. How about an outline? That's due today, right? You have Roman numeral one, number two, and number three. Right? Good cop. And you think of a topic, another topic, and another topic. So you start working with your story, my story in this case, your story, and you start outlining it. And then you start working with the details. And you start giving your details more information. And your story starts, starts taking form. So ladies and gentlemen, this is writing a narrative. There are some stories in chapter 13. I recommend that you read them. I'm not going to read them that right now. Those stories are there for you as an example. As an example. So, I mean, I've, today I've kind of lectured a little bit and given you more information on writing a narrative, more examples. And uh, I just, I'm trying to be as helpful as possible for your work for your rough draft that is due next week. Uh, so thank you very much. That is Writing a Narrative, Chapter 13, and I'll see you next week.